much? Did they do crazy things? Did they not use common sense? Because the, the stats show that the American people are no different in their personal lives than they are in, as a country, as a whole. That's what's happening to us. So we have to change us, and then we won't accept it from our leadership anymore. Let me go to, in, this is the book Keith and I put together, it's The Seven, The Seven Wonders That Will Change Your Life. This is a country solution on an individual basis. One of the seven is friendship. And I got into the, uh, the break here and I just asked, who here has lost friends or had problems with friends or family? It's caused real stresses in your personal life because of what you believe and what you stand for and say. And you were saying, Diane, that you think that this is kind of like the Civil War right now. Yes, I think there, I, I did not obviously live in the time of the Civil War. No. I, 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 did, I did not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, from what I've read, I, I would have to say that there is as much uh, unrest between people and family members as there was at the time of the Civil War. It's interesting because the Civil War pulled people apart and families apart. Now, again, if the country is going through this and our lives, our personal lives are a reflection, Keith, as a guy who is a recovering alcoholic and my best friend and my wife are here in the audience, my friends changed. And there was, there was, there was almost a fight in my friend circle from the, my bad friends of no, no, wanting to hold me there. Does that make sense? It does absolutely. Look, if you use the individual as a metaphor for the country or the country as a metaphor for the individual, it takes courage, but it also takes friendship in order to tell someone the tough truths. And I know that Pat was there for you. He wasn't jollying you along. He no. was saying, man, you're bankrupt spiritually, but by the way, I love you and I'm here for you. Yeah. Why, man? What, uh, this is an incredible... What about him led you to say I'll hang out and remind him that he's a decent person? Uh, you know, there was a lot, um, I think, that I saw in him that maybe others didn't. It was a little like, you know, he was talking about the, uh, the brain coral earlier that was muddy and messy, and, and I, I think I saw, you know, there was some coral under there. It's, you know, maybe been and brain uh, coral broken to this away. guy? He's, he's a little piece of brain coral, and so I just <laughs> washed him off. <laughs> right. Put him in some bleach. And, right, uh, and, and it'll all be good. Go. Yeah, but um, the, the, the thing, though, Pat, is I was split and had you, and you were really one of the few. And then I had a lot of other friends who were living the same kind of life that I was. Mm -hmm. And this is what I think is happening to us politically. Um, is that a lot of our friends are saying, no, you don't want to be one of those crazy people. You don't want to be that. You don't know that's crazy. And they're holding you down. And yet they haven't looked, really truly looked at their own problems. Would, who in the audience would say that's accurate with your friends that are disagreeing with you? What, what is your name? I'm sorry. Judy. Judy. Go ahead, Judy. Yes. Well, it's, it's just that it's very difficult because they don't want to hear it and they don't want to understand it and they don't want to discuss it and it's very frustrating. Right, and they're, but they're not doing anything about it. They're not doing it. anything. They're not engaged, that. right. No. And so on a personal level, because that's what's happening all around the country, on a personal level, what do you do? I know what I did on the Friends. I lost all of my friends and I, I, I had to stop being with my bad friends because I, I, it, was just, it was leading me... It was enabling me. So what do you do? So if you're interested in restoring yourself, you take a good hard look at how many pats are around you and how many false friends. And you say, who has really challenged me? And who has told me, don't worry, there's no pain in store for you. One of the things a real friend will do is say, look, it's going to be tough. If you've got a detox, whether it's as a country or an individual, there's pain. There's real pain waiting for you. But guess what? It's OK. Because, number one, you have people around you who support you. Number two, you're a decent person inside and we can see it. Or we love this country and we know its values are strong and can be restored. That's where the faith comes in. There's a plan for you. Anybody who believes that in their heart can be a true friend to you. And Tanya, hmm. talking about family. 
believed it I because would, there's a story that just I blew would my be mind about dead uh, if it wasn't for Tanya. Would you agree with that, Pat? No, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I'd be dead if it wasn't for Tanya because because I did I didn't expect the clouds to open up when I had courage and said, okay, I want to change. But I thought it would be a little easier than that. I thought, okay, you know, things, I'm trying to live my life the right way. When are things going to get better? And I think it took four years, Pat? Four years, maybe? Seems, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About four years before, and I was like at the end of the rope. It took me four years, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I can't do it anymore. And that's when I met Tanya. And things take time. That's where the faith comes in. Yes. For a country or a person. And that's where love and family comes in because you told me a story where you approached this woman. This is how powerful people are hang in on each other's lives. Hang on, hang on just a second. I gave your wife's approval to tell this. Oh, okay. We'll do it in just Fun. we'll do it in just a second. <laughs> that I ask that you would consider and um, challenge in your in your own life. We were just talking in the break, and I want to get to the story that y you want to get to here with um, my wife Tanya. But we were just talking to Pat in the break, and Pat, you said, um, well, say it again. In, in the beginning, when I was saying, Glenn, it doesn't have to be this hard. When you were going through all the things you were going through, alcoholism and alcoholism, er horrible, whatever else. There's answers. You don't have to put yourself through this. You you weren't interested, right? You just weren't interested. And, and I and Still I'd like denial. to ask you: Is it normal for somebody in my position to actually want him to fail a little bit? I wanted him to be wrong, so I wanted him to fail. Is that normal? Sure. Okay. It's, See, Pat, I it's told you. Very it was. normal. Uh, <laughs> that really hurt his feelings when I told him that years later that I yeah. I actually was hoping he would kind of fail, but because listen, it would make me not have to listen to his answers, which I didn't want to because they were hard. When you know you're on the wrong path. Yeah. As a citizen, as an individual, as a country, you can't honor things and, and really meet with them on common ground. You do resent uh, truth right? because you're not living a true life. It's when you finally come down to the nitty gritty that you can say, wow, this guy's been beside me an awful long time. I have to tell you, does anything that, I mean, whenever you hear anybody stand up and tell the truth and you see how they're pilloried, in public. Mm. Is it beginning to make, I mean, it's just hitting, it's dawning on me now as I'm tying the personal experience that I've had and now other experience. Right. In many ways, I'm you. Mm. You know, when people are like, he's wrong, he's bad, he's, uh, and that, and I didn't ever say that, that I'll admit to, but, um, <laughs> you know, I wanted you in a way to fail so I didn't have to face the truth that he was saying. And what's amazing is he was telling me before. I really had real problems. You were telling me yeah. this way before, right? And he took yeah. a risk. You yeah. could have said, you're out of my life. Right. Your wife, who gave us permission for the story, you told me a story that blew my mind about the role that family and love can play. Because you said that on a particularly bad evening, you came up behind her and you warned her. I was... Um so I felt like such a black hole um, that I was, she was so, she is in, she's more beautiful inside than she is outside. And she radiated light and goodness to me. And I felt like a black hole and I just felt like I was bending it all into me and I was just stealing all of her light. And I thought, I am going to crush her. I'm a black hole. I'm going to crush her. And I walked up behind her. And I put my arms around her, and she was facing that way. And, and I said, I felt like I had to tell her. And I said, I guess I could feel her goodness. And I said, I have to know I am stealing light from you. And without hesitation, and you don't even really remember this, do you? You kind of do. It was the moment that I was like, oh my gosh, I have to marry this woman. <laughs> she said to me, without hesitation, you cannot steal that which is being given. I was like, wow, who are you, you alien life form? <laughs> yes, uh, an alien life form. But what did it do? It restored some confidence deep inside you that you're lovable. A question you had carried with you since you lost your mother. 
You were the See, object. Here's of the problem: is here's the problem, America. I don't believe in all this mumbo jumbo. It's all your family and your I'm telling and you. all this crap. Here's the thing: I believe in. Get over it. Get over it. But it takes all of this to yes. quote unquote get over it. And what she did for you is she restored a flicker of light inside you to say, "You're worthwhile." She was a she was a, li a, a lamp post that you could at least hold on to and say, "Oh my gosh, these two were tethers." that would, would help me through. Back in just a second. My theory is that our problems are so big in the country that we don't know how to solve them. Nobody's gonna come along on a white horse and solve all our, there is no magic problem fairy that leaves us a quarter and takes all our problems away. Um, we have to fix them. The founder said, local is the best form of government not national. We're going global. It's not local. It's individual. Individual. We have to fix ourselves. That's why Keith and I have worked on um, The Seven, uh, that you can find more information out about glenbeck.com. Jack, before we go, you were saying. Yeah, I'll ask the, the doctor to talk a little bit about respect, because um, in that relationship, um, neither one of you had to be right all the time, but you had to know that you were loved in that, in that situation. Yeah. I, I mean, he knew he was right, and that really pissed me off. <laughs> but you um, respected, well, you say. Well, yeah, I, I, think we, I think there was mutual respect. You know, right. even though you were, you were struggling, you still, uh, what you weren't was patient in those days. <laughs> and I think, that's what, I think that's what came out with many others. <laughs> that is the nicest way of saying you are a big fat jerk I think I've ever heard. Uh, it is, it, um, um, that's one thing, Jack, if I may go back to our country, that we don't have. I have never said that uh, Van, I never called for Van Jones to be fired. I've called for Van Jones and the president to explain do you agree with him? Did you know he was a communist? How did he get there? And if you do agree with him, why? What is your fundamental transformation? That's a respect. I respect you being a communist, Van Jones. Now, let's just be honest about it. And if you respect me, you will tell me what it is, and we can have a dialogue, a respectful dialogue. That's not happening in America, and it needs to. Back in just a second. I ask you to challenge everything you believe in, everything I say this year. Seven wonders that will change your life? No, that will change your country. Find out more at glenbeck.com, and we'll see you back here. From New York, good night, America.